Good morning. My name is Chris Fulcher, and I'm going to be talking today about visualizing people, place, and possibility. I grew up on the move. I grew up as an army, bat, army brat, traveling from place to place every year or so. And the points that you see coming up on the map are the places I've lived, not where I visited, but lived, starting from my hometown of Omaha, Nebraska, moving from state to state and country to country, like Germany, England, El Salvador, and a tiny island in the Caribbean called Nevis. You know, my mom and dad always made a point of not having us live in those capital cities, the large urban areas where the expat populations were overseas or the military bases. They had us live more in the outside areas. And it's been a fantastic experience. One example, uh, when I lived in England, I went to an all-British boarding school. And I was the only American in that boarding school, and that was quite a, a cultural shock for me. You know, I can imagine it now. You know, BBC Masterpiece Theater, uh, Nebraska Yankee and Queen Elizabeth School, or something like that. But it's, it was an amazing experience living in these uh, different countries. But seriously, my parents gave my sister and me a great gift, a gift to be immersed in other cultures. I lived in many places, and they, they say that we are a product of our environment. Well, in, in, in my case, I am the product of many environments, living in so many different uh, areas, learning new things. I really focused on and became fascinated with geography, culture, customs, and really tied that all together when I went to the university and it was formalized in the areas called GIS, or Geographic Information Systems, computer mapping, around the areas of pattern recognition or systems thinking, thinking of the whole rather than a disciplinary approach. I wanted to be like my dad. I wanted to continue to live overseas and travel, and I thought everybody growing up moved every other year and went to many, many schools. Um, so I went to Texas A&M and joined the Corps of Cadets. And while there, between my junior and senior year, I went ahead to basic training. And at basic training, they gave me a physical exam and a hearing test. Well, they found out that I was deaf in one ear, and they said, son, you're not going into the Army, which was just fine. So what I did instead was I went into the Peace Corps. Again, this restlessness of wanting to be on the move, going into the Peace Corps, volunteering. However, there was one thing that separated me from getting in the Peace Corps. It was, again, a physical and a hearing test. And I thought, oh, not again. So I go to the doctor's office, sit down, and I said to him, what's this hearing test? And he said, well, it's actually a whisper test. I said, what's a whisper test? He went like this. He mumbled something, turned around, looked at me, eyebrows arched. I looked at him and I said, yes, definitely. He said, good, you pass. To this day, I have no idea what that doctor said. <laughs> but what I do know is it's about pattern recognition. I saw his facial features, eyebrows arched. He was asking a question, yes or no. In the context of that place there, I was assuming he asked if I heard him. So I said yes, and the rest is history. Went into the Peace Corps, and then several years later, joined the AmeriCorps and worked in the state of Missouri on the great flood of 1993 recovery efforts. Again, a fantastic experience. The last dot on the map is moving to Columbia, Missouri, 25 years ago. Yes, after all those years on the move, I've been able to stay in one place for 25 years. Um, I went to the University of Missouri, and I was very fortunate to have a mentor. His name is Dr. Tony Prado. He really also saw the world from a systems perspective, how all the dots are connected, rather than a disciplinary perspective. He taught me. He provided an incredible foundation and tools that really influenced my path forward. Well, at, while I was a student at the University of Missouri, we started this center. Tony Prado, my friend Chris Barnett, and I started a center called CARES, 
or Center for Applied Research in Environmental Systems, a long name, no one remembers it, so we typically go by the name CARES. And it's been a fantastic journey over the past 20 years with this center, innovating, creating data visualizations that I'll be showing you soon. Well, since I was no longer traveling around physically, I thought I would try to travel around academically. Continuing my restless behavior, I used CARES as the base in the College of Agriculture and ventured forth to foreign colleges such as the College of Arts and Sciences, the Department of Geography. I worked for a little time in the vet school, uh, a faculty member in the Truman School of Public Affairs, and then did a postdoc fellowship at the, um, in the medical school. And I learned different things, and it just reinforced this connectivity that I experienced. You know, if you think traveling to other countries is a culture shock, just try immersing yourself into different colleges. That's, that's, that, that is a, definitely a shock. Um, but seriously, it's about the patterns. It's about seeking patterns. It's about understanding the context of these patterns. And it's about looking at differences and commonalities. And I brought back what I learned to our great team at CARES, an incredible group of people passionate about data visualization and making public data publicly accessible at no cost. Bringing back these ideas to the center really spurred a lot of these different projects we've been working on over the years around childhood obesity, poverty, around many different uh, environmental degradation type of projects as well. And it's been a fantastic, fantastic journey. So that led to a culmination in all this work. I recognized that with all these different projects we had, we had different websites for different organizations, but they were all disjointed. Again, getting back to this whole thing about connecting the dots and the commonality, it finally manifested itself in this, new, uh, this newer public offering, which is called Community Commons. And Community Commons is really about networking the networks. There are many, many dots on this map, about 3,000 as you zoom in and see these dots. They're all about from a healthy eating, active living type activities in communities around the country, funded by organizations like CDC, or Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, YUSA, et cetera. One community may focus on um, child nutrition, another one around safe routes to schools, a third around physical activity and obesity. The challenge was, is all this great work was going on, but they were in silos. They were all in these cohorts, if you will, of groups doing this great work. And we've been asked, because we are connecting on these separate websites, all these different activities, they said, hey, can you connect us together to help us learn who is doing what and where? So that emerged into Community Commons. It's a website that provides ways that people can connect through social media, through blogs, through forums, and it's all about accelerating the learning around this healthy, sustainable communities movement in the United States. It's very exciting, because moving from physically, physically traveling, academically traveling, to really being on the ground and working with organizations around the country, and that's where the great learning has happened to, to pull these pieces together. Another component of our website, a Community Commons, is a very robust national data engine. It's a GIS uh, mapping engine. With thousands of data layers, you can zoom into any part of the country. So what is a GIS, or Geographic Information System? It's basically layers of data, one on top of another, that you go and put on top of each other to represent the real world. One layer could be hospitals, another layer could be schools, a third layer could be road networks, a fourth, poverty, food, deserts, the list goes on and on. So it gives us a different way to look at people in place. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you a short video about the mapping component of Community Commons. What I'm gonna show you is an area where we can select data. When I click OK, there's thousands of data layers behind health, education, physical, food, so we're gonna select a data layer called predominant race ethnicity. 
where the majority of a population may be white, black, Hispanic, etc. When I click on that, the national map pops up, and it gets down to a very fine level of detail. It goes from the county down to the track, down to the block group. I'm going to zoom into St. Louis. You see the green areas are predominantly black, white areas, uh, the white populations in blue, Hispanic pocket. It helps us look at issues such as health equity or health disparities, overlaying public schools on top of this and looking at those children or the percent of that school that is eligible for free or reduced lunch programs. We can then start to do analysis because it's not just a map. It has all this underlying data underneath. I can do a split screen view to not just look at predominant race ethnicity, but let's bring up poverty. And on the left side there, you have poverty. It's county level right now. But let's change it to track level data. You can see the spatial variability of where those pockets of poverty are. And this is children in poverty overlaid with schools. You can expand that and imagine doing this with thousands of other layers for any community in the country at no cost. The key thing about this is it's about visualizing people and place in unique ways. I'm zooming into San Antonio right here or any other place in the country. They say a map, or actually a picture, is worth a thousand words. And that's not exactly true. The literal translation is a picture is worth 10,000 words. Every map tells a story. What story do we want to tell? How do we want to share that? We can save these maps and go to this website and generate reports and put them in PowerPoint presentations or give them to our state legislator or our congressional staff person and really highlight the issues that we're facing in our area because maps really help us tell that story in a very succinct way. I've shown technology. Uh, my background is really steeped in technology, but grounded in people and place. Ultimately, it's people, not technologies, that tell the story. And it's people, not technologies, that make decisions. We use words like big data. We use other words like technology solutions or data-driven decision-making when in fact it's people-driven decision-making informed in part by data technologies, but also informed by what makes us human, our ability to understand context, our intuition, our understanding of nuance that really informs uh, how we make decisions. So it's a balance of using technologies and data in the appropriate way that aids decision making and not having technologies overwhelm or abdicating what we do as decision makers and saying technologies will provide the answer. They provide part of the mosaic of the answer. Technologies are fantastic. We are in a great time where it's evolving very fast. The problem is technology changes faster than people. And what's really interesting is that, well, I try to make analogies, and my family usually groans when I attempted an analogy. Uh, it usually bombs, but I'll try to do so here. You know, with, new te with technologies as they evolve, we fumble around and we experiment with the technologies. Here we go on the analogy. Here's the radio days. You have people standing in front of the microphone telling the story, the guy shooting in the air to to make that sound like it's a, it's, it's a live show. And um, so the radio days that were standing around the mic, well, with the advent of a whole new medium, visual, visualization, they were all still standing or sitting around the microphone with the fixed camera in one place, not moving. So we have that mentality of the radio days in the beginning years of this new medium that we could really maximize. And we're doing that now with visual visualization. We have a similar challenge today. We are in the infancy of the digital age. The infancy of the digital age. We are like those folks in the early days of television. Fumbling around, we have so much to learn about how we can really 
leverage these new technologies, big data, data visualization, how we support decision making. It's a fascinating time to be alive um, and really learn from this. So with Community Commons, we're looking at crowdsourcing. How can we not only be providing data so people can consume information, so there's consumers, but there's also prosumers, producers of information and content. They, produ they provide data, they provide stories, they provide the, the context around what they're doing in their places around the country. So it's that feedback loop that really makes these dots, connecting the dots, much, much richer. Going back to the first slide and showing you it here, showing you the slide here, this is where I served in the Peace Corps. It's that small island in the Eastern Caribbean, Nevis, and yes, it's just like those ads say, it's the toughest job I ever loved. Um, paradise is really not a place, it's a state of mind, and there's some ex wonderful experiences in this island and other places where I, where I volunteered my time. It really grounds me. Whenever I get really excited about technology, I think about people, I think about place, I think about the appropriate context of where technology can be used. You know, I have a lot to learn. I have a lot more dots to connect. It's been a fantastic voyage with the, uh, with the team at our center at CARES and our nonprofit uh, IP3 to really bring all these pieces together in community commons. And I've learned that it's not so much the distance that separates us, it's more about how we connect the dots. So I urge you to go to community commons, explore your communities, look at the commonalities and the differences of what you see and where. Uh, connect the dots, see patterns, and enjoy the journey. Thank you very much.